Hey, how's it going everybody? Just wanted to welcome the EQA community to uh, 2023 with a new video. So my previous video on setting up this Sandstorm multiplayer server got taken down because it uh, violated the terms of service of uh, the YouTube page. Um, I was supplying you guys with copyrighted material that I shouldn't have been. So um, we're going to be remaking that video and I will uh, show you guys why that stuff is copyrighted and um, potentially how to get it yourself um, So anyways, here we go. Um, so this is the server That we're going to be trying to connect to this page here sandstorm.kigo.tv There's a whole List of links and stuff that you can look through if you want to understand what's going on here um, basically what we're doing is just capturing the packets that are meant to go to the original EQA server at Sony and we are sending them to this address instead that's pretty much as simple as this project gets so um the first thing you will need to do is the top link I will have in this video will be this Google Drive link PCSX2 1.6.0.7 zip so this is going to be a zipped f folder so when you un when you download this you need something that can unzip it um, for example, the 7-zip, <laughs> or if you go to send to, uh, all right, I thought there was something else under there. You could send to and unzip it, but maybe not anymore. Um, so this f folder needs to be unzipped. What you're going to be left with is this folder here. As you can see, it doesn't include the BIOS of the PS2, which is copyrighted. It doesn't include any ISOs, which are also copyrighted. What this folder does contain is a couple custom plugins that make the game work a lot better than they would without these custom plugins. So basically, this plugin helps us connect to the network. This plugin makes it so the game, the keyboard works inside the game. So I just wanted to specify that inside the game, not once you get to the first thing that we're going to be doing inside of the network adapter setup video. Um, in the network adapter page, you will need to use like the actual, the actual, like a, a controller. You'll need to have some sort of controller set up. And that's going to be the first thing that I'm going to show you guys how to do. So you'll be downloading this PCSX2 1.6.0.7 zip folder. I recommend you download 7-Zip. It just makes extracting things a lot easier. Just click that right there. It'll make this folder right here on your desktop. I recommend you leave this folder on your desktop. This folder has everything inside of it that you need to run the PS2 emulator. And it makes everything very easy to find and very easy to notice if something's going wrong. The first thing you want to do is that right here, this application, PCSX2. That's what you want to run. All right. And as far as the copyrighted materials that you guys are going to need, I'll try to explain this as, as well as I can, you need the PS2 BIOS. Basically what the PS2 BIOS is, is files that come from the actual console itself that are copyrighted material of Sony, as you can see right here. <laughs> blah 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 blah. So you need the, these B BIOS files. Um, you can find them on the internet if you search for them, or you can have a modded PS2 and just extract them from the PS2 itself. Um, that's what I did years ago. But um, it's a lot easier to find these online now. Um, just wink wink. <laughs> also, the other files you will need are the networking adapter setup disk. In the EverQuest Online Adventures Frontiers disc. So if you have a computer with a DVD um, reader in it, you can just literally take your PS2 disc, drop it in the tray, close it, and run this program on it, and it will convert that file into a digital file. Um, alternatively, you can also, again, find these files on the internet, but I can't supply you with them. So, 
Once you get those files, you'll need to add them into this folder. I put them in a separate <laughs> folder on my computer, just so I can show you moving them into here. So inside BIOS, we'll need to go all of the BIOS files. It's multiple files. This is what I captured off of my personal uh, PS2 I got, I think, Christmas 2002. So these are the BIOS files from that system. Again, the BIOS files might look different on, depending on wh what sort of system you got them off of. Um, depending on if it's, you know, a slim, one of the silver ones, a black model, but it's going to be a bunch of files. You put them all over into that BIOS folder. In this ISO folder is where the Frontiers disk and the Network Adapter Startup disk is going to go. Again, just copy them in there. If you need them, take the disks, use Image Burn, just burn them to the, your hard drive itself. Image burn is really great too because it checks for errors on these disks so you know if there's going to be an issue with them before you use them. And then everything from here on out, once you have those files, should be pretty easy. You're going to want to run this PCSX2 application down here. The first thing I recommend everybody to do, is because everybody always had issues with this, is to go into config controllers plugin settings. So I have an Xbox 360 USB controller. It just works. I just plug it in and it just works. I don't have to do any of this setup stuff. I think most Xbox controllers are going to be like this, but if you have maybe a generic sort of controller or like a PS4, PS5 controller, you might need to go into this pad one over here. Use a mouse and the controller itself, click L1, press the button on the controller that you want to be L1, press L2, again the button you want it to be L2, and just go through all of these over here until everything is working. Um, I noticed on my original video a lot of people had issues understanding that they need to have a controller set up. It's a PlayStation 2, it uses a controller, you need to have a controller. Um, that's. <laughs> There are ways around it, but I'd rather not complicate things for everybody. Um, so that's the first thing that I would do. Next, what I would do is you're going to want to... I would go through some of this stuff just to make sure first. In config, dev9, plugin settings, click under enable ethernet. Just be one uh, windsocks auto this address zero 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 both of those don't have auto on apply then we're gonna want to go to boot ISO fast the first thing you want to start up is that network adapter startup disk So basically with this and a combination of what we have set up in that Dev9 settings there is going to connect us through our router to our ISP to that custom server. Um, this might take a little while to load. Unfortunately, this is a long load for some reason. Actually, not too bad there. So again, if you're not able to do things like this, <laughs> left and right right here and press X it's because you need to have a controller set up so get over ISP setup hit X and you're just gonna want to go through this like it's setting up a regular automatic setup just automatic everything format your memory card it should find your network adapter if that CLR networking plugin is working correctly. You can press X to continue. You can put in whatever age you are. I'm 33. This stuff does not have to go in. Just hit enter and go all the way through. Again, 
you just press X through all this stuff. Give it some sort of name. I'd recommend just calling it EQOA. I know there's a couple of private servers that I like connecting to. Another one's SOCOM 2, but just name this one EQOA. Hit yes. High speed. Automatic settings. No and no. And then this will save everything to the memory card and we will be good to boot up the EverQuest Online Adventures disc right after this. Hit the X to save and once it saves we can just exit right out of here. Congratulations, blah -de blah just fucking eggs out of there. Go to your CDVD ISO selector. Go to EQA Frontiers. We're going to reset and start up Frontiers. accept their terms and service. Alright, right here, yep. Prepare the memory card. And once this is prepared, you should see that EQA file that you made on the network adapter startup disk. Right there. And as long as everything is working, you should get all the way through. You should connect to a server, and it should give you updates from Xylop and instructions to tell you how to connect to the server. Um, one of the main things I noticed with this server when it first came out was when you try to s like create an account and save it, if you take too long, it will like disconnect you. Um, you might need to go through, create your account name, save it, and restart this process just so you log through fast enough to actually um, so it doesn't disconnect you from the server um, I'm not entirely sure if that's still a thing anymore but I remember that being a common issue that a lot of people had before too but yep if you're connected you'll get right through here writing game data and good connect and again so just make sure you guys this all the setup here use your controller to get through once you get into the actual game you can actually use a keyboard and it should work right away um, with the plugins that I have set up in there and um, we also have a, a like a unique little like script thing that we have in there where um, normally in PCSX2 if you press escape it just closes the program down we have it so now you'd have to hit shift escaped and um, the main deal with that is that in the game, like if you want to close your chat menu with the keyboard, you have to hit escape. So it would, it would close people's entire emulators down. So we made it so it's a little more difficult to just to do that. Um, but yep, it just follows instructions. Listen to the good word of Xyloth. Another thing that I'm going to go through just before the end of this video is like video settings. Number one, if you're going through here, this should always be running right around 60 or just under. That's the frame rate that you want to get. Um, you can go through in these video settings and you can change things though. I wouldn't recommend 8-bit textures or large frame buffer. This doesn't seem to make a difference. The things that I would recommend changing is number one if you have a NVIDIA graphics card you should be using this OpenGL hardware if you have a Intel or um, AMD graphics card I recommend you go to Direct3D11 you can also go through increase the internal resolution depending on what sort of monitor you have you'll you'll notice it 
um, especially if you're cranked up for like four times, it's noticeably crisper. Um, Anisiotric filtering, you can use that if you want to. Um, and that, the rest of these I don't recommend using free QA. Any sort of mip mapping, CRC hack level, data accuracy, blending accuracy. It's it's just really, they don't help anything for this game. But um, I hope that video helped everybody. If you have any sort of issues, you can always contact anybody on the EQOA Facebook page, our Discord page, or any other sort of way that you can get a hold of me. Um, just don't expect copyrighted material. <laughs> That's all. I hope you all had a nice night.